yours. <clears throat> it's not often we see this kind of a situation, but over the uh, the weekend something happened, and this this tired looking boat had trouble, and here we are. It went down. It, it went down in its slip, and now the uh, we have quite a bit of a uh, crew here and some spectators, and the plan is to just pull it up on on the grass and let the water uh, go out. I guess. Um, not sure what's going to happen once they get it up on the grass because <laughs> you can't you can't really really take it away from this spot. But maybe they can figure out where the uh, where the leak happened and plug it up and <laughs> and put it back in the. Well, I don't know if you push it in if you pull it up. You, so they're going to be uh, the parking lots over here. So there's a truck that's that's come over and they're going to try to pull the rope <laughs> using a truck to pull it up out of the out of the water here. But I don't know what's going to happen after that. It's a little unclear. This place isn't geared up for uh, for dealing with uh, heavy boats in an unfortunate location. Hello, Divine. Good afternoon. I had to think about the time. Good afternoon to you. So I, ha I happened to be in the office this morning and heard them talking about a sunk boat and came over to check it out and thought I'd do a little video of it just being sunk in its spot. Its spot was right over there. Yeah, Happy New Year. And and I thought they were going to try to rescue it tomorrow, but here they are rescuing it today. So so even better, even better timing. I wouldn't want to be the uh, I wouldn't want to be the owner of this boat. I I bet he probably, I don't know. If you just look at the <laughs> if you can Yes, Happy New Year from Scotland. If you uh, actually the closer I get, the better my signal is, too. Uh, but you can see this boat has just been it hasn't seen any cleaning for ages. It's it's all all dirty from from stuff blowing around. We're really not near any trees, but it looks like it's been been sitting underneath a tree full of sap or something. So someone just didn't didn't want to take care of their boat, and here we are. Um, it's a tired old thing. Probably not worth anything. Of course, now it's not worth anything being sunk. Um, <laughs> but this is this is definitely a, a, red net, a red redneck rescue process. Uh, you know, lash it to a to a rope from a, a truck and pull it up on the grass here. Uh, but you know, then what? You know, if if the holes in the back will just drain out, or maybe this boat has a plug they can pull and uh, and figure out why why water got in. Well, just try to get it up. But just getting it up on the... Hello, hello. Oh, there we are. Green eyes see you. Haven't seen you and I uh, usually I see you uh, at the other side of things. It is beautiful here. I, I had a very happy surprise. We've had several days of rain and, and gloom and downpours. And you can see it's winter here. There's no no leaves on the on the trees. The, the evergreens are still green. Oh, afternoon for you too. I don't know what, well, even what country you're in. Uh, this, is, this is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Oh, oh my goodness! All right, hi, hi, Clint. 7:20 p.m. <clears throat> so you're. Oh, that's right. Yep. I should. I should remember that. I'm having a little trouble seeing the screen here, but that's no excuse. Uh, the sun's. The sun's behind me. Um, so anyway, this poor boat's going to get pulled out, and and it's a little unclear what happens. This marina is not geared up for for moving something this size. Uh, and once it's on the grass, then what? Uh, do you plug the hole and put it back in and, and bring it around to to yeah, where they can can remove it? Let's step back. Let's step back. All right, let's let's step back. There's going to be tension on that line. There it is. Yep, something's going to go flying. I've seen that happen before. So so we'll go over go over to the safe spot. So they're about to pull and. This this tiny little boat, huh? Hello, hello, Clint. This tiny little boat. The closer I go this direction, the better signal I have for Wi-Fi. All right, so he's starting to. Here's, here's the truck in the parking lot. Yeah. And they put a little tension on it. But the other trouble is, this is a very cheap boat, and the tiny little cleats. <clears throat> If you pull, if you pull too hard on those little cleats, they're just going to tear out of the deck. Uh, that's the trouble with a lot of these uh, 
these small power boats is there. They're chiefly constructed. I'm trying to sit on the... Is it safe to sit up here? A little more comfortable? All right, so he's backed up. I heard someone talking about, uh, you know, clearing out the parking lot a little bit. They've disconnected the rope from the from the pulling truck. Uh, I guess there's another truck that's going to move out of the way. <clears throat> oh, and also, if you thought that boat's in trouble, how about this one? Look at the look at the top of this pontoon boat. That's in very sad shape. So. Uh, one one of the joys about this marina <clears throat> is it's very cheap, but it also means that people who have like no money at all just put their boat here and, and don't maintain it. Obviously this boat that's still floating could use a lot of help if its top cover is all, all ripped up. Um, that's That's been let go for, for quite a long time. Um, so anyway, we're waiting while the trucks are maneuvering around and and you really can't see it through the shade, but they're they're attaching the rope again. One of the trucks that was parked there is out of the way. I'm very happy that <laughs> I caught this removal process. I thought it was going to happen tomorrow, uh, so I just had my lunch and and came over here to do a short video, saying I do a long video tomorrow, and I'm going to do a long video today. Plus, I have a good a good upload speed. I always do a check. <clears throat> You never know how, how the Wi-Fi in these places uh, spreads around. All right. Now he's going to give it a little pull. Finally, we get to see some action. You can also see there's some oil <clears throat> oil floating on the water. You can hear something might, some of these cleats might, might break off and, and fly out. Uh, once that boat feels the banking, <clears throat> this is the dangerous part. All right, maybe that's as far as they're going. Who knows what's happening? <laughs> I'm, I'm not privy to the, the plans on, on how to rescue this boat. Um, it was it was tied up to the, the spot it was in. It just sank in its spot. And now it's now it's gonna now it's not gonna sink anymore. <laughs> not any further. Not any further. Not any further but, but what are you gonna do with it? Uh, get lifted up tomorrow with a crane. Oh, oh, good, a crane. All right, so there is gonna be a part two. The crane has to come over. That's uh, that's a very right now. It's a very heavy boat. Um, so I have to ask one of these guys when the crane's coming. Yep, they're finished. They're finished. It was just getting it positioned. So. What I overheard this morning about about fixing it, rescuing it tomorrow does apply with the crane. That will be even more interesting, but probably a tedious process <clears throat> because you'll have to get you have to get ropes underneath the hull and somehow keep them from slipping, and then the crane's going to lift it slowly, and water will slowly squirt out wherever the opening is. <clears throat> it might be something so simple as, as the uh, the bilge pump stopped working, and and all this rain we've had just slowly filled it up and nobody noticed and then uh, over the weekend with the rain that was just the last uh, last drop so anyway this scope is is over we'll have more hopefully have two more tomorrow I don't know what the weather's gonna be like um, we've had a lot of rain recently but uh, that boat's not going anywhere it's it's tied in pretty good and there's very little tide here so it might float up and down a little bit but but it's it's it is where it is until tomorrow. So everyone, thanks for checking in, and we'll catch you probably in about uh, 24 hours or thereabouts. See you later. Viewers, as promised, but a day late. Here's part two of the sunken boat removal. I heard some activity this morning, and this giant crane has has come across. The crane was here yesterday. In, uh, in just parked in the yard and now the crane is here busy and I heard some some activity and came out and a little bit late there they've already lifted it a little bit but there's this uh, maybe I'm not too late I might be too early too there's this long delay while this giant pump does its thing 
so the uh, the crane just lifted it up another uh, a couple inches and I suspect I might have a part three because it's going to take a long time to pump all this water out. They've, they've made a lot of progress considering that the thing was almost completely submerged and uh, I was talking to a, a man that lives lives on his boat near here. There, there, there he goes now. Hi Paul. And, uh, and this boat went down in a, in very abruptly on New Year's, you know, New Year's morning. Uh, he also said that four years ago this boat was in, in functional condition and you can see that the front of it is completely covered in, in green. It, uh, in four years it's been let go and, and then something, something inside let go and it went down in a matter of moments. And it went down so fast that all the air inside was, was pushed out and made a very strange sound. Which I don't see her, which a lady that, that just was here a moment ago was, was on her boat and, uh, and heard this strange noise thinking it was, was some boat arriving. Um, but it wasn't, it was some boat departing, so to speak, for, for, points, for points lower down. So, I'll scope for a little while if people drop out. I only have six viewers. If people drop out, I'll, I'll try to get to the lifting part. That might, might not be for a little while. Um, this pumping is... The, the pump's going gangbusters, but it just has a whole lot of water to pull out. It is that it's waterline, more or less. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, it's probably not too often you get to see a sunken boat being uh, being rescued. Uh, I don't see. Uh, <laughs> am I missing Florida? Yes, it's it's a cold here, Paul. Uh, it's it's not often even I get to see sunken boats being rescued. I, I have seen a number over the over the course of my my life. Uh, this one was a fairly <clears throat> fairly benign incident in a calm place, tied up to the dock. Happy New Year, Roddy. And, and good morning to you too. So there's kind of a high noise level. There's the, the crane is running and this, uh, this massive pump is, is doing its thing. Um, so I'm having to speak up a little bit. And, and for people who have just joined, this is, this is all you're going to see for a while as they, as they get the water out. Um, that's a fast pump. And I, I would think at this point that it would be uh, more or less almost finished. Uh, I think once you get to the water line, there isn't much underneath after that. The, uh, these motorboats aren't generally too, too deep. So, uh, do I see anybody in the crane? Yeah, I think, I think there's somebody sitting in the crane. I, I can't tell. Just waiting, waiting patiently for... Up, oh, up. Oh. See, there's the water. The water's almost finished. It was giving a little spurt. I think there's a, I think there's somebody in the boat that's moving the hose around. Uh, we don't have any idea why it took on water. My idea was was wrong. Uh, the the sinking happened very abruptly in a, in a matter of moments. So something something large. So there's going to be a large opening that <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Um, but there's somebody in the boat who's wiggling the hose around, and that's why the water's starting to sputter. It must also be almost finished. Uh, yeah, now it's finished. So, so good timing on this. They're going to do the uh, hauling up part pretty soon. Yeah, shut the pump off. Okay. So now, now part two is going to begin in a moment. They've got to get the hose off, and, and the guy on the boat has to come off. A boater's nightmare. Uh, well, who knows if even if this boat had any, had any insurance? No insurance. No insurance. So the marina, the marina has to pay for all this. The marina's paying for it. Yep. Right now. Yep. And we'll have to go after the owner. And good, well, yeah, but good luck getting money from someone who, yeah. who doesn't have any money. Yeah. And and fortunately, there there is a bit of a fuel spill, but no one seems to have have reported it's not, it. It's not a bad one. It it's, really is. It's, it's just going to it's just going to evaporate. Uh, you don't want the Coast Guard involved. You definitely do not want DNR. <laughs> no, you definitely don't want the you don't want the authorities involved. So don't don't call them. 
Oh, hello, uh, hello, green eyes. That's why they're doing it very quickly. Yes. Well, and they're, you know, for a boat that size, that's not much. That must have been an almost empty tank. Or else it's still in the tank. Actually, well, I won't say anything because you're... I'm online. <laughs> yeah, but my viewers are not from around here. I have one from Bird Bay Root watching. I'm not going to say a word. Not going to say a word. One boat, slight, slightly, slightly used. Slightly. <laughs> slightly used. Slightly. Just, just got washed. Washed in fresh water. Washed with the gumballs. Washed, washed top to bottom. <laughs> Are you in Haps? No, I am not in Haps. I haven't even installed Haps. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening uh, <laughs> with with Haps. Uh, I, I do have you now installed just because I wanted to watch somebody who, who kind of moved to you now. Um, I am in Twitter. That seems like a lousy place to broadcast from. Uh, because how do people who are on Twitter find you? There's this, uh, to my knowledge, there's no discovery method. <clears throat> so are they going to go haul this up into the parking lot? Is, is this thing going into the parking lot? Uh, I think what they're going to do is uh, they're going to pump it and plug it. Okay. And then put her back in. Okay. Leave it. I think. I don't. <laughs> oh my goodness. You mean leave, leave it right here? No, I think or, I'll put it right back where it was. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she was out of the water up until five days ago. She was fine. Right. So if you patch, you know, you pump it out, plug the hole, she'll float. Yep. Yep. Well, that's true. Yes, Jess, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll have to look at the V-plate to, to make a note of that. And as long as the bilge pump is still working. Well, yes. <laughs> well, how about the, all the wiring, the batteries? Yeah. The, the fuel's lost. Uh, yeah, the fuel's... Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't matter it, it, even it's, if they, it's, it's, the, it's, the, the engines are now flooded. It's not going to go the engines, anywhere. The engines have been underwater. They're useless. Yeah. They're absolutely yeah. useless. It's just a giant paperweight now. And so it, it has to, eventually it has to get taken away. Oh, yeah. But they just need to leave it somewhere. For, yeah, for now. Yeah, they'll eventually get it out. But I, you know, there's you know there's a lot of legalities that go involved. Right, involved. Right. Who owns the like boat? This. Might yeah. not want to. Has yeah. he been paying his bills? Hasn't been paid his bills. Oh yeah. well, that's the other problem. Okay, Jess. That's uh, that's unfortunate if comments don't show. So they're they're attaching a line from the. Uh, the, the marina's work boat to the front of this sunken one. Maybe they're gonna try and yeah, I like Periscope too. Take it over to the uh, to the dock and yank it over there. Maybe that's what they're gonna do. Well, at, the to the to fork, at the fork, at the at the at the forklift. They'll take it. Yeah, they'll take it over there. Right. Maybe that's what they're gonna do. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, you wouldn't want to try and do it here. I mean, you'd have to empty the entire parking lot. Yeah, oh. just just imagine crane tips over, crushes four cars. <laughs> <laughs> Kills three people. Kills that, three people. That wouldn't be good for the insurance. That wouldn't be good. For the and and then the coast guard would definitely become involved. <laughs> yeah, along with the cops. <laughs> along with the cops. That, doesn't a cop work the here? District attorney. Don't 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 we have? You a, really don't want to get them. No. Involved. No, you don't want the TV stations coming down no, with their mobile they trucks. Have TV stations. They have the <laughs> right. Papers and everybody. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that would be kind of ugly. So so if they're going to tow it, they've got to plug it. <laughs> orange underwear with, is that fish that are on it probably hey fish. boy uh, no, hola <laughs> buenos dias I'll speak in French bonjour ça va bien now watch it'll say you take down the Oscar boat with it well you know I don't see anybody inside with a, an old t-shirt right or a wooden plug <laughs> yes uh Oh, Jess, you're, you're about the Jess, the Jess, you're a hoot. What do you mean, the straps? That, no, the bow loop. Oh, the, uh, oh, that the, eye. The eye, yeah. Well, I saw them hauling the the thing up on the shore with the truck on the cleats, which which probably inspired even less confidence. Yes, it would, especially on that deck. Yeah, on that deck. Oh, that's great, Jess. No. Yeah, that four deck's got it. Here's fact, the crane. I know, I know that four deck, that top deck is 
soft. Very I soft. Know, personally, I know. You stepped on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, here we go. Well, maybe not quite. Here comes the other hook. Yeah, that whole boat is soft. It's, it's due to be cut up. My last sailboat Stay. I had to send to the just, crusher. Just needs to be, yeah, cut up and put in a compactor and it's yep. all good. Called away. It's, it's, oh boy, there's a green. All right, so they're slacking off. They're slacking off. I think I'd be wearing a life jacket. I think it's that cold. water is not too warm. It's not going to sink. It's like not going to sink, but you don't want to end up in the water with no life jacket. Yeah, I would put a life jacket. But these are country boys, right? Yeah. What do they care? We're tough down here. Right. <laughs> are, are you from like Oregon or something? Yeah. Well, that's that. You have to be tough there too. Yeah, Keep your head down. All those bullets flying. Yeah, there. Right. You around Harrisburg? York, Louisville. Okay. Good for you. Chicago, so that's even yep, don't more, uh, don't leave your boat in the water. You're more duck the bullets. Uh, I met one, one. I've met so many nice people down here. The the trouble with this yeah, boat is the the owner hasn't been paying his bills. Obviously, he has has very little or no money, no insurance. Oh, it's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. Okay, so they've oh they might. Oh, this is interesting. <clears throat> they're they're going to try to lift it here. This is this is a, this is not what we were planning on. They're gonna try lifting it up here, at least a little bit. Oh, good timing! I'm standing underneath a roof, and it's starting to rain. The French Connection. Okay. So if the uh, if that second if that second hook, they've put put the line to the front of the boat. Of course, it's going to stretch like a, a banshee. Who knows if the hook uh, stays or if it flies out? Here's the, this is the difficult part. So something could definitely go wrong here. I'm going down to my boat you want, you want to bring me a uh, nice warm blanket? Or, you know, plug it in. Bring up the generator, plug it in. Yeah, here we go. I still love you, Bill. <laughs> yeah, if something goes wrong. And now it's pouring down rain. <laughs> yeah, but at least we're standing under the roof. Yeah, I... These people over here don't know enough to come in. No, I don't think they have a choice. You've got to come in from the rain. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> Scott. Scott, that's that's. I never thought about that. I might be recording this on YouTube. Actually, there is a there is a YouTube channel of of like boating mishaps of the week or something. Boating uh, boating bozos of the week, whatever it's called. I, I saw that one. Uh, the most recent one had a sailboat driving into a train bridge that was down and breaking off its mast. Like, how how can you not see a train bridge that's in the down position? All right, now we're going to have a. Now we figured out we're going to stand underneath the roof. A meeting of the mind. It's like sheep. All it takes is one person. <laughs> Go stay where it's dry. So, crane fell in the sailboat. Yeah, that's that's that. All that's avoidable. I think it's going to be. Yeah. And it's going to yeah, well, well Roddy, that would cause a bit of an unfortunate lo loss of, of real roll. estate. Now, see, the gentleman that passed our boat before, Bill Lambert the rain's, the rain's come on pretty strong now. So I'm glad this place <laughs> has a little roof I can stand under. This is the big, this is today, this is the week's big event at this marina. Actually, technically, it's the biggest event of the year because the year's only a few days old. So now, what are we waiting for? Oh, okay. So I think what they've done is is they've lifted the front of the boat up. They, they've lifted the front of the boat up, and now they're starting the pump going again. So they're going to get the last little bit. 
They're going to get the last little bit of the water. So, so for people who are just joining, uh, on the first of the year, this boat was, was in its spot over, over here. You can see there's an empty spot. One or two empty spots. This boat was in its spot. And, and within a few minutes, it went kapow and, and went under and sank. And then uh, two days ago, they used a, uh, a truck to pull it up on the banking here. So at least it was, was not going to get any lower. And then the crane came yesterday and parked. And now the crane is, is doing its thing this morning. And they pumped most of it out, and they're pumping out the last little bit. Right now, the uh, the cranes picked up the front of the boat and let the, all the last of the water run to the back. So I think I actually started this scope at just the right moment. You know, there are some some long uh, long delays here, but there can't be very much water left in that boat at this point. Do you think this boat has a plug in the back? They can just pick it up and let it run out? It could. Yeah. But I doubt that's what they they're, they're not, that's No, that's too cool. small. Yeah. First From what you said, small, it went down too fast. Screw in and right. the screws don't They don't let go. Don't fail. No. No, they don't let go. So more than likely it's a through hole that just... The yeah. grocery store is Cox in Great Bridge. Gave loose and that was it. Uh, okay, thank you, Scott. Except I almost... I hopefully never will stop in Great Bridge again. I was there the last time, because you're mentioning that, I was there because the Dismal Swamp Canal was closed. And now the Dismal Swamp Canal is open again for, for a while. Yeah, well, this this boat is, is finished. It's, its days are over except for a visit to the dump. Somehow, eventually, eventually this boat will be going to the dump in, in pieces. Um, there's probably nothing on this boat that's worth uh, worth saving. You know, it's all been submerged. It's all all very outdated. Uh, all the electronics, everything's wet. Um, just a disaster. And and Scott, the route I take, the Dismal Swamp Canal, has a great grocery store, uh, literally across the street from a free place to uh, to tie up. If you know that area very well, it's where the Mexican restaurant used to be, be near uh, near the Deep Creek Bridge. See, they are going to set it on fire. Yeah, it was a pride and joy at some point. <laughs> uh, what's this? What's this gas can? They're going to just burn it down to the ground. That's a great idea. That's just going to burn it. Yeah, the food lion. Yeah, the food lion. Uh, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a bit of sad news associated with the Deep Creek Lock. And that's my, my good friend Robert passed away in October oh, man. from a heart attack. The decent thing on the boat is now so like, I won't be visiting him anymore. Where is this located? This is in Myrtle Beach, yeah, South, nice South Carolina. What was the valuable thing? The, uh, the light on the bow. The light on the bow. Yeah, it's... Now it's a paperweight. Yeah, now it's worthless. <clears throat> Yeah, that was the only thing worth anything on that boat. Now it's gone. Yeah, yeah, my, my good old buddy Robert's no longer with us. <clears throat> the only good piece of news is a friend of mine had visited me a few years ago, and, and we got some video of him talking about uh, the canal and how the locks worked. But uh, things, things aren't the same anymore. <clears throat> Well, they've moved the pump from the dock to the boat, and and the plan might be to to pull it around to the uh, the forklift area, and and I think the forklift is probably strong enough to lift it I mean, I don't know into a safe place, the or they could just use the crane, <clears throat> but at least they can can put it to the side and in the forklift area, and then put it on the rack. And, and and then some truck can come and haul it off to the. The boat, the boat they, chopper. You can't, leave the, you can't, you can't leave like that. I don't think they cannot leave the property unless they own it outright. Oh, right. I don't think they own it outright. I don't think they have clear title. Yes, Robert. Robert collected all the conch shells. <clears throat> he also grew the banana trees. Uh, that's one thing I never really showed you is he had to bring the banana trees in every winter and keep them inside, hibernating.
inside his little building. You see the progress they've made in the new bridge at the end of the canal. Uh, uh, Scott, are you saying that the replacement bridge is under construction? It was my impression there was a, another another ten months to go. Yeah, Robert is no longer with us. Robert Robert had a a sudden heart attack in October. This is in South Carolina. This is cold here. <laughs> I have my coat on. Uh, I've also seen in, in other weeks. I've we've, we've had a couple below freezing, pretty cold nights. Seen ice, ice on the docks, frost. Uh, business owner's responsibility to do their due diligence. What part of South Carolina am I in? I'm in Myrtle Beach. And you can see this is a very, while we're waiting for developments, this is a very snug little spot. Hall. Years ago, it was, years ago, this was all forest. And then the trees got cut down and the excavators came in. And the way out to the Intracoastal Waterway is through that little channel. They're hanging the... Sp Scott, how can they be hanging a span? I didn't even see any construction when I went through. What? <laughs> You're talking about the, uh, the, the Dismal Swamp Canal. My understanding was they were still in land, land acquisition until, uh, until later this year. Uh, oh, oh, Scott. I think you're talking about the uh, the high-rise bridge. What is it? Uh, is it? I forget the number. Is it 65? Lives in Conway. Well, tell your mom to watch the scope because we're not too far away. I think you're talking about the highway highway bridge, Scott. I I was thinking of the. Uh, you know, the highway bridge doesn't worry me too much because I just go underneath it. It's the. Uh, the, the bridge in the Dismal Swamp Canal that worries me. Um, that that construction is going to go on for years when they start replacing it, and it's going to take up my favorite grocery stop, 20 feet higher. Well, the other bridge used to open, so I guess they had to adjust uh, adjust the new height to allow for whatever had to be be the tallest uh, vessel that they can anticipate. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of a uh, lot of bridge construction in that in that region. They they found some money to, to fix things up. All right, so the pumps in the workboat, the pump is started. Now, one thing I don't think they've uh, oh they've put a discharge hose <clears throat> onto the pump, so the water's going over the side. Except there is no water right now. It's, it's kinked up. There you go. You can see there's the guy on the left. Trying to, trying to get it primed, I guess. There we go. Okay. Yes, this, this is not a, <laughs> this, no, no, this is not a golf course. You can see this is a boat, a boat place. Uh, but it definitely, it definitely is a hazard. Uh, I haven't really shown it, but you can see there's been fuel fuel leakage, which is uh, not, not too extensive given the fact it was sunk for, for a long time, but it, it's working its way along the shore, a bit of spilled fuel. Well, the crane came here yesterday, and sometime, uh, early, sometime in the morning yesterday and was sitting. Uh, so yes, it's probably expensive rental, but they, they didn't start using it until this morning. Um, I don't know how crane rentals work, but but there's obviously a little bit of extra time. You know, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't rent a crane at a thousand dollars an hour if it's going to sit sit for one day. But imagine having an operator over in the cab. That's all costing money. This is a this this is a big ex, big expense for the marina. Um, we were joking about this gas can in the distance, which I think is probably for the uh, for this giant pump. 
So the pump is still, they're still pumping out. They got it going again. Um, see, we were speculating what, what the procedure is going to be at this point. And this is not a good place to be pulling a boat out and putting it in the parking lot where it can't go. Uh, so I, the idea is to bring it around to the other side, which is over, over in this corner, over past the, uh, on the other side of that main building. <clears throat> that, that corner is where I'm at, and it also has the forklifts and the boat storage area. So that'd be a good place to pull it out and have it sit until something can be figured out. There's a whole legal process because the owner hasn't been paying his bills. Now there's an accident. There's no insurance. Uh, <clears throat> so, so actually getting the boat disposed of is, is yet another another headache for someone to, to deal with. There can't be too much water left in this boat. It's, it's already kind of at the water line. This is, this is the slow part of the video, but I don't have much to say. My the people that were standing next to me, it went off, so we don't hear them, have them chatting. Uh, we don't know if the guy who owned it is still, still alive or not. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not the person to know. I, I just got here a little while ago. So once, once the water's all pumped out, then we'll be on to the next step. And normally I'm, I'm able to narrate a bit, but I've run out of things to say. This, this is a bit of a boring, a boring moment. Plus you can see the skies are gray, we've had some rain. Kind of, kind of mean outside. Sing us a song. Uh, if I sang you a song, every everyone's dog would start to howl. When boats sink, are they trashed? Uh, they don't have to be trashed. I, I do know of sunken boats that have been pulled up, and all the wires have to be replaced. The engine or engines have to be uh, worked on immediately. Actually, it's it's for a little while. It's okay for an engine to be submerged if it's sunk for a, a few days or maybe a week or so. Uh, but the moment the engine comes out, then it starts to rust from the inside, and there's lots of uh, lots of very precision bearings and what have you <coughs> that need oil, not rust. This boat is a, a loss. It, it's just not not worth. You know, if the man doesn't have insurance and he hasn't been paying his bills. And it's just a, a lousy boat. Uh, but I do know boats that have sunk and been pulled up, and you have to fix the engine immediately, and replace all the wires, and this is, this is a complete loss. This boat is, is done. Yes, yes, it might still float for, for a few more minutes as they tow it around, and then it will be coming out of the water for the last time. And, and ultimately, it will be... Uh, cut up, crushed, uh, the engines will come out and be, be scrapped. It's, it's basically a large piece of trash right now. Um, wooden, wooden boats, the best kind of boat to sink, because all they need to do is be dried out. Uh, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I have any interest in a, in a tired old derelict that's, that's been sunk. Um, you can you can spend some some money and and get a real, real boat that actually works. Oh, oh, it's much better to submerge a boat in fresh water. <clears throat> Salt water is, is much more corrosive. Um, so the trouble with getting in any kind of water is all your wires are start acting like wicks, <clears throat> and the water gets into the wiring and turns, and especially salt water, it gets into the wiring and corrodes it and turns it green. So, no, this is fresh water. This is part of, uh, part of the Waccamaw River. It's, it's connected to the Waccamaw River. So this is all fresh water that comes from inland when it rains. This is the drainage, part of the drainage system for, for uh, eastern South Carolina, northeastern South Carolina, the water from inland comes through this region. 
and the uh, the city of Myrtle Beach has has giant pipes sticking out into the river and that's how they get their fresh water now obviously they they draw the fresh water out and go through a treatment system yeah salt water is bad enough um, I, I, I do know people who've had boats that sank. Uh, so what were you saying? The best boat to preserve... So if a boat, a boat sinks and it comes up, <clears throat> the first thing you have to do within a very short period of time is to start... Let, let's assume there's just one motor. You have to get the motor free of water and, and have oil in it again. All right, Roddy, you come here and demonstrate first, then I'll follow your example. Uh, so if you want to save a boat, you know, you have to save the motor first. Everything else can, can take longer because you're going to have to take all the wires out and replace them. And the size of the boat then determines how big of a project that is. It's a real pain. Most, most wires in boats aren't, aren't they're just sitting in plain sight. They're hidden behind things, so all your, all your upholstery is lost. Uh, any any kind of coverings on the ceiling that are made of fabric are lost because you have to think about what's what what's mold is going to start forming. Uh, so that's why, in a certain sense, a wooden boat's good. They don't have a lot of that the extra extra uh, decor. But there's not too many wooden boats left, and of course, wooden boats do do tend to sink more than than flat plastic ones because they, they might have leaky planks. Um, I've, I've seen both kinds sunk and, and pulled up. A friend of mine, his boat was hit by lightning and, and sank because it, it popped a hole in the bottom. But it was a small boat and we got all the stuff out and then he rewired it and it was an outboard, so he had the outboard fixed and, and all, was, all was back in order. All right, so maybe something's happening here. These guys are going over toward maybe where the boat's coming out. Boston whalers are in, I believe they're impossible to sink. The, uh, the hull of a Boston whaler is, is thick and, and might be, so, has some foam in it. I've, I've seen years ago, I've seen pictures of a Boston whaler cut in two with both parts floating. We're, we're not too far from the airport and we seem to have something flying right overhead. It's an interesting funny shaped plane. Well obviously there's still more water in here than I thought. Uh, well, you know, if you if you put an elephant in a Boston whaler, it would sink. But, but if you took the elephant out, it would pop up again. We, when I was growing up, we had a, a boat like a Boston whaler, and my father wasn't very good about going down and and getting the water out. And sometimes the pump would stop working, and he'd get a phone call, and he had to rush down because the water was was up to the edge of the boat. It, it was, you know, it couldn't fill up anymore. It was as high as it could get. And everything inside the boat was floating around, uh, hopefully not washed away. And then we'd have to find a bucket or something. And, and you can't, you know, I guess, I don't know if we stepped in the boat or not. But you have to get the water out of the boat, one bucket at a time. All right, so maybe we're on to the next step pretty soon. The, uh, the pump's just gone dry. But there's nobody in the work boat to shut it off. Two guys went off in a golf cart for, for unknown reasons. But I, I suspect the next step, all right, we're letting the bow down. There's a bit of a snapping noise as the, as the tension came off. So the whole boat's going down. Yeah, you're welcome for this scope. It's, uh, it's not something I'd ever thought I'd ever be able to scope. It's not too often I even see a sunken boat. And, and this is a good spot because I have a good Wi-Fi signal.
Yeah, oh, now the pumps, they're trying to get some more water out. Maybe not. Now the guy on the boat's having a little meeting with the guy in the, sh in the underneath the, the roof there. We all want to tell him just let's hurry up and get it over with. Yeah, I, I, I don't see boats sink too often. How many are watching? They're waiting for the crane to fall over. Uh, this is not a very populated marina. I mean, there's a whole bunch of cars here for people that, uh, that live on their boats. So there's a guy in the crane. There's a guy standing outside the crane. There's a guy in the boat. There's a guy underneath the roof. And there's two guys that went off in a golf cart. Okay, now we're on to step some some other step. They're slacking off. We're in this scope. How many people in this scope? Twelve people. So the crane is not going to tip over. It, it really wasn't pulling very much. Okay, see, see you later, Roddy. Thanks for popping in. Um, the crane wasn't taking much of a load, and now you can see the uh, the straps are coming off. They're slacking down on the straps. Yeah, this, the, well, there were 12, now Roddy's gone, so now there's 11. But I suspect there'll be more in the replay. Um, this, is, this is a fairly good time of day, unless you're in California. So a bunch of my regulars came, came in. Um, so there's going to be a little bit more, obviously a little more delay while while they figure out what to do next. But I, I'm kind of guessing they're going to tie alongside with the work boat and just, just motor it by side towing. Motor, motor it around. I might break this scope up into two parts. Yes, I'm a sailing guy. Usually you see my scopes from a sailboat. Uh, but since I've been here for a while, it's hard to, hard to show scopes from a sailboat when I'm not going. So, my last few scopes weren't all that interesting. Um, the one before this one was, was just uh, just seeing this, this sunken boat pulled up on the grass. And the one before that was kind of cool. I was interviewing uh, a young brother and sister in a tiny, tiny little boat with no cover. And they were going to Florida. East Coast. Are you, are you asking or questioning? Um, so the, the young couple I was talking, not couple, young brother and sister, started in North Carolina in, in an open, open skiff, an open, uh, used to be the kind of a whaleboat dory, an open dory, and then going to Florida. They should have started either sooner or farther south. That's, uh, that's all, they, they had a lot of cold weather. And, and their sleeping arrangements were, 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 were the worst I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the brother being taller, yeah, I do make the trip up and down the coast. I try to get up to, uh, to Maine, and if I'm lucky, I get up to Canada. Oh, now there's a lot of noise for a minute. Up goes the hook. So I do try to go up to Canada this year, of course. The, no, correction, last year. Last year the border of Canada was closed, so I couldn't get up there, and I, I that was a lot. Last, last summer was just a lousy summer. Yeah, a lot of drawbridges. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, oh yeah, the Cape, I, I did do the Cape Cod Canal once, I, at least once, maybe twice. All right, down with the straps. I can't, I can't talk when the motors, when the crane is running. If you watch Captain Q, I don't think I've seen Captain Q, but I will, will try to look him up. So I, I think I've scoped from in, from in my boat in the Cape Cod Canal and also from a friend's boat that we are moving up. There goes the hook back up. Oh, watch out. Couldn't do that if you tried. Got tangled up in the other hook. That's what happens when you go too fast. Now 
now they're now they're snarled up around each other. This is South Carolina, folks. People don't necessarily have the best skills. Uh, you didn't have to go in the water. You just had to put the snap, the strap, the snap. You had to put the strap over the front and and wiggle it, wiggle it to the back. All right. So now what? Yeah. This this is not. This is probably our, this this might be a first of its kind scope. It's not too often I I get to see a sunken boat. Um, yeah, no, I've I've had uh, I've had had reasons on my on my sailboat to put things underneath, starting at the bow and working working to the back. Um, it's a lot easier when you can just do it on deck with two people, sort of uh, see seesawing it back and forth to to wiggle it to the back. So, so they're rolling up the straps. Well, I'm glad people are still hanging in there. This is this is a lot of lot of waiting before the uh, the next bit of action happens. Pick up the straps. Pick up the shackle. Something something will be happening soon. This, the, you know, they're still. They still hold, have a little little tension on the front of the boat to keep it up, and the pump's still running even though the water's not not squirting out. Well, I try to explain. Um, there's nothing worse than watching a scope with with no one talking, right? Um, so yeah, this is not one of those scopes where the crane's going to tip over. It's it's barely <clears throat> barely uh, barely taking any load on. Now this boat will have to come out. That might, there might be a second scope today. It might take a little while for them to get to get set up. So over here, they're putting the straps in the back of a truck, which they might drive over to the um, lifting out spot. Yep, no doom and gloom news. This this is just a this is just a this is a boat sunken boat. I wouldn't say it's routine, but but it's not unheard of. And and this you can see this. Uh, this boat facility has has no provision for taking any 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 boat out of the water of any size. Around the corner, which which we might see later or in the next scope, around the corner they can pick up small boats like like this, like this pontoon boat, or like that motor boat. They have forklifts with very long forks. And the forklift goes to the edge of the water and and plucks it up. Oh, the owner has definitely been contacted. If, if we know who the owner is, he's been contacted. And now, now my, my co-narrator co has, has rejoined me. What have we missed? So they've lifted the bow up, they've pumped it out some more, they've taken the straps off, they've scratched their heads a few times. Uh, the yeah, I think, I, I think I'm right. I think they're going to pump the, it the, out. The, the strap, it and... Two guys in a golf cart went, went that way. Yeah. The straps are in that truck, like it's going to go over that way. I think they're gonna, yeah, I think they're gonna take it over there. To pluck it out there. Makes you can just put it in the grass or something. Put it on a rack somewhere. Yeah, they have they have those racks for, for washing out back. But why why waste a good rack? <laughs> you just let it sit in the gravel. Yeah, I mean really, yeah, right? might as well. But of course when times to get rid of it. Pulling out the uh, furniture or whatever. Yeah, that, let's save the let's save the wrecked furniture. What is, what is that they're trying to pick up? I don't know what that is. Well, there's a it's, boat. It's obviously heavy. There's, there's a boat behind me that has a tree growing out of a fender. Oh, over there. What is that? Is there a boat ramp? No, there's no boat ramp here. Not not here. Is that a seat? It could be a seat. Oh, well, it's gone now. <laughs> How many feet is this boat? I, I'm going to guess this is a 26-foot boat, 28-foot boat. That? Yeah. Uh, 30. Not 30? 30? I'm 35. 35, okay. 30, 35, 32. Yeah, 
That's a long bow. Oh yeah, that's a long bow. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. And and you think there's two engines in there? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely two engines. Yeah. 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 Someone's pride. Someone's former pride and joy. But this is this is what happens to old boats: is people give up on them. So there's a little more activity now. Of course, we got the uh, the dogs running around. Dogs sniffing gas. Got, got to sniff. Gas, got to so. got to sniff the gas tank. <laughs> but I, I suspect we're going to have have some new development pretty pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, we shut off the pump. Boats sink while tied. Well, you know that's that is a very very big concern. This boat did sink, but the front of it was still above water. Uh, I'm I might guess that the back of it could have been on the bottom. I, I have I have actually I have been into this dock, and I don't remember the depth, but it, it wasn't it wasn't extremely deep. It wasn't very shallow, uh, but it's quite possible that. No, wait. I think the back of that boat was still tied onto the dock and just went down. But but if it's deeper water or a heavier boat, definitely the dock could, could go down too. Um, years ago, I was at Star Island and a boat came came up right next to the dock and and a high tide and he ran into the rocks on purpose, but it didn't didn't work. He was trying to beach himself, but the rocks were too steep. And he had a huge gash in his boat and he was sinking. So he, he tied his boat alongside our dock while he's sinking, and, and we didn't want it. But, like, how do you get rid of a sinking boat? Like, if you cut it loose, it's just going to sink in the harbor, right next to the dock. So, so we, we did get it pumped out, and, and it didn't sink. Uh, but it was a big concern. We don't want a boat, a sunken boat on a, on a dock that you need to use. Um, these, these docks, you can see the, the little finger part isn't, isn't very wide, so... You know, if you put enough load, it probably would just submerge um, up to a certain point. Uh, they're not designed to bend, so so they'd break off eventually. Yep, still 12 people. They've they shut the pump off. Something should be happening soon. Well, the, in theory, yes, the owner is, the owner is responsible for this disaster. But the trouble is, he doesn't have insurance. I'm, I'm, well, I'm told. Uh, I'm told he doesn't have insurance. I'm told he hasn't been paying his bills. Obviously, he doesn't have any money he wants to spend. So you take him to court. You, you, get, into, you, get, a, you, you get a judgment for, for whatever it costs, let's say $30,000. And if he doesn't have money for insurance and for dock fees, he probably doesn't have the $30,000. So, so then the question becomes of, of how do you collect money from someone who doesn't have any. Uh, hopefully, well, here's what they were hauling out. It's a large cushion, very soggy, finished cushion. Um, so how do you collect money from someone who doesn't have any? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem. <clears throat> the... Uh, there is a bit, it's hard to see with the way the, uh, the sky is reflecting, but right in front of me you can see a bit of, maybe you can see a bit of fuel going by, just the smallest amount. On the top it looks like gasoline. Gasoline's okay, this is a small quantity, and, and if it was warmer, if the sun came out, it would evaporate. Yeah, well, lean on a house doesn't help you, who knows if he owns a house. Uh, but the lien doesn't help you until he sells the house, which could be in decades. Uh, garnish wages might, you know, $30,000. If you garnish somebody at, at $20 a week or something, it, it's just all, all very time consuming. So I, I, the, the marina here has to have an insurance policy uh, for liability, and they also have to have insurance on because on, they sell fuel. <clears throat> they have to have, have insurance for a fuel spillage. So they must have a general uh, general policy, which hopefully will cover this uh, this situation. And then 
And then that insurance company can go after this guy with, uh, <laughs> with very low hopes of ever, ever getting anything out of him. All right, now what? Now they're gonna put the pump. What, what have they done with this pump? Okay, down come the hooks again. They probably need to un yep, they need probably need to untangle it from that, that rope. So they're slacking off on the on the front of the boat. Get the hooks untangled. Yeah, that poor guy, he you know, that's a real that's a real problem is how do you get rid of a oh my goodness, this is excitement. I don't know if they planned on doing that. No, they didn't plan on doing that. That was a real excitement. Well, folks, you got to see the deck of the boat being ripped off. By, the, by, by accident, by the hooks of this crane. That, that shows you how, how, how badly held together this boat is. That the crane operator can't see what he's doing. He has some, I, I don't know, I think he has some bushes in the way. I don't know if you can see exactly what was going on there. But those, those hooks are still all tangled up. Like, just, just bring everything a bit lower. There we go. Don't be so quick. There we go. No, no, there's no load. That's just, just the pulleys. There's, there's no load on any of that. Just, just the weight of the, that big pulley. All right. The crane is, is disconnected. And we saw the front of the boat, the deck, get ripped off. It was, it was held on so poorly. But yes, the, the inside of that, that boat is... is you, no, one, no one should have been using that boat for years. It's obviously unsafe. So now it's floating, and then they're going to tow it around somehow to the other side. And obviously, whatever, whatever caused it to sink is, is no longer the case. They've, they've <laughs> quiet up there. That's a noisy crane. They've, they've plugged up the hole at least long enough to, uh, to get it around to the other side. So if, when they start towing, I'll, I'll, end, I'll end this scope and start a new one on the other side. Now hopefully they tow it side to the, they, they tie up to the side of this boat to tow it side, sideways. No, we don't know what caused the hole. I, I can try to ask somebody later, but by the time I find out, I won't be scoping. So in a, in a small area, the best way to tow a boat is to tie the, the working boat alongside the broken down boat. You have a lot more control that way. So that's what they look it looks like they're they're getting set up to do. Yes, I, I could I could give you a short update. Um, I might be able to ask someone that's walking around over here as as they tow this thing away, there's a few extra people. And I might be able to ask that guy in the uh, in the checkered shirt, what what the hole was. So they have the pump on the boat. Pump's not running. I can see the discharge line sticking out over the side. The crane is 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 getting set up to move. Yeah, back to work, Scott. There'll be a I think there'll be a part two in a little while uh, at the haul out location. Uh, so not much to see. I'm going to uh, I'm going to scope out and see if I can ask this guy what what the this reason for the hole was, and uh, look forward to a, a second scope in a little bit. Maybe there'll be a, a haul out.
in an hour, or 30 minutes, or whatever time it takes. The crane has to relocate. So there's going to be a bit of a delay, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what they do with this. Yeah, so I'm going to go ask this guy. Uh, I'll scope out, and I'll come back a little while. We play viewers. Here we are over in... Hi, Roddy. Roddy, you're... Yeah, got me. I'm on a, I'm on a different phone here. <clears throat> and uh, so this is, this is try number one. They, they towed it over uh, with the little motorboat. And they also then just pulled it on the, on the rope. The pump's still working. So try number one might be uh, the only try. And they're going to try lifting it with the forklift. Whoops. Watch the rest of the replay. Yeah, well, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is part two, and I'll give you an update. Anyone who's, who's curious about what, what happened is the only thing I, I knew from the guy I talked to around the other side was, uh, was they don't know where the hole is. Uh, water's still coming in. And that's why the pump's running. Um, but obviously the pump's keeping up with, with the inflow. Let's go, let's go horizontally. So here's try number one with the forklift. This boat is a little bit bigger than the forklift normally takes on. So, <clears throat> so if the forklift happens to topple into the water, then, then that's the end of try number one. Uh, Let's see what happens. This just this might be just fairly routine, and it's up and out and and hauled away. The uh, the man I was just talking to, no, they didn't find the hole. Um, so I was told the boat went down abruptly, but that might just have been its last gasp. Uh, there is water coming in though. I mean the pumps the pumps actually doing some some serious work. Uh, the crane is is now moving. The crane is is back onto into road mode instead of crane mode <clears throat> so if they need the crane they'll be they'll be available um, so the one person I talked to said said someone pee in it then you will see the hole well no you know when it lifts up we'll see the hole too or or not it might not be a hole it might just be uh, <clears throat> be some place where water was some some fitting for the engine the engine cooling system or the sink if they have a sink it could be any normal fitting that <clears throat> that just let go. Uh, so the guy I was just talking to said this boat used to be on C dock, and then he stopped. The owner stopped paying, and they towed it to A dock. This is the worst boat in the marina, <clears throat> and they've been to his house, knocked on the door. He won't answer the door. So obviously the guy knows, uh, and he also bought this boat for a hundred dollars at some some derelict place. Um, you can't waste too much time now because if water's coming in, it's only going to be getting heavier. Yeah, he bought this boat for hundred dollars years ago, uh, so it must have been kind of a derelict to begin with, and and he obviously didn't put any money into it. Look at look at how decrepit this thing is. It's been sitting for years, and and then kapoop, down it went. Uh, so it might have been the case that that the first person told me it went went down abruptly. Uh, but it could have been the case that the water just finally... Yeah, well, it's not floating, really. I mean, it's floating temporarily. And, and if you let it sit here for a couple hours, it would not be floating. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely sinking. Um, the temporary pump is not, not running at the moment. They had a they had giant water, water removal pump. So they're going to try to lift it up. Uh, this, this crane is... Uh, not the crane. This, this forklift isn't... Probably might not be the best, the strongest thing, uh, but if they can get it up three, three or four inches, yeah, maybe a homeless guy. I don't even think a homeless person would want this boat. So what's going on? This is this is a sunken boat that got pumped out. It sank at the dock. It got pumped out. They got it towed around to this this side of the facility where this forklift is trying to lift it. Um, there, yeah. If you want a cute boat, make an offer. I bet you could get it for free. Just, just come in with a, a Lloyd boy and and drive her away. So, hey, well, you know, everything's for sale. That's for sure. But you need a friend with a bucket. Um, they've got to get it as close to the front of the forklift as they can, so that the whole forklift doesn't topple into the water. 
Uh, this this boat might be a little bigger then. No, no, I don't think you're going to get a delivery on on this. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to come and cut it up with a chainsaw. This boat has to go off to the crusher, <clears throat> and then the and then the landfill. So they're still trying to lift it. I don't see the crane coming. No, it, this boat <laughs> this boat is no good. Uh, probably the most valuable thing on that boat right now is the electrical cord. And uh, and who knows? I don't know if that dock line belongs to the boat. That probably belongs to the marina. Yeah, this is definitely pretty heavy. Um, you can see they're not lifting it. He's asking about if the tires are off the ground, and I think they are. Uh, so, <laughs> so we might have to have a scope number three. Uh, yes, I can get closer. I just don't want to get too close. You can drive it to the UK. 29 bucks. Well, how about some fish and chips, too? And now, the trouble is, if I get too close, I'm, I'm walking away from my Wi-Fi antenna. So someone, yep, someone sent me a heart or a, or a comment. Um, I'm on my, my pretty good phone. Uh, this boat was only sunk for a few days. Of course, it was probably uh, slowly sinking for, for much longer. Uh, but you just see, see the condition of it. It's terrible. Let me see if I can see over. And I still don't see a crane coming. I don't know what they're doing. Um, one thing, if you have a very sharp eye, when the crane was lifting its hooks out of the way, it caught onto the, the railing, and the whole front of the deck just got lifted up. It's not attached anymore. Fish and chips with a touch of tea. There we go. Yeah, all right, thanks for testing your horn. We know that works. So the whole front of the deck got lift, ripped off. Well, hello again, replay viewers. You've got to love Periscope. I'm on a brand new phone. I just, uh, I just turned the phone on and Periscope crashed. That's, that's, that's so ridiculous. Um, and it also flips around when I don't want it to. So, so I guess that was okay that it crashed. There's not much happening. Um, if I felt a little, if I felt a little braver, oh, 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 oh the, 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 I guess they got the pump going, and it's squirting everywhere. Uh, you can see there's some water. Good morning, Greg. There's some water coming out of drain in the back. Yeah, the guy is shouting, get the water out of the boat, not spray around inside the boat. Well, I'll be going to Twitter. I might try Twitter, but I don't understand how anyone would ever find me on Twitter. I, I don't understand how people discover live videos on Twitter. Um, so I could try it, but I think it will be a, a failure. Um, to, if, if there's some way of being discovered on Twitter, let me know, because I've, I've never seen any any way of doing that. Yeah, yeah, you need to roll down to Georgia. But also make sure you bring your make sure you bring your gun with you. So we're not going to politics today. Uh, one where the bilge the bilge pump, well you know what? I think the bilge pump is probably uh, probably quit. It's 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 taking a little break. Um, the uh, the guy I was just talking to <coughs> said they they the guy the owner hadn't paid for a while so they put the boat from from the middle dock to the dock at the end and when they did that they pumped all the fuel out figuring that it might sink someday well you know people in Georgia they might get get a little rebellious. Um, yeah, I can't be Roddy. I can't be. Uh, hey, hi, Luke. Good morning. Uh, let me think. Uh, good evening to you. I guess um, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, I don't think I'm going to try Haps. I, I might try it. Uh, there's something called You Now, but no one seems to know about it. 
which is as close as you can get to Periscope, but there's no way to really do a title or to discover people. There's no map. There's no calling in. Very early morning. Okay. That's why you missed my other scope. You were still sleeping. Uh, let me look back. I still don't see the crane driving over. But I do hear some, some heavy, heavy motor running, big motor running. Um, so there might be a part three. We'll see if this crane is coming. I could shout. I could try shouting up to them, but if they have pump that pump running, they won't hear what I'm I'm saying. So this isn't very much. This isn't very exciting to watch. I might have to s scope out and and start a part three. But they seem to be doing something in the back with, with, with the with the with the big pump they're using to get to get rid of water. Maybe they're trying to get the last little bit out. Um, I think they're probably at their weight limit. Yeah, you know, I, I'm holding really still. And it looks like the back of the, the back of the forklift tires might be lifting up in the ground. I can't quite see if it's off the ground or not. That would be, uh, <laughs> well, the forklift won't topple in because if it starts to tip, then the boat goes in the water and takes the load off. But they are definitely trying to get the water out. Yeah. See, that's that's my. I'll look into haps. I, I don't like all the little messages across the top of the screen, but but I guess that's that's the way of, of things now. I guess I'm just so used to Periscope having a clean screen and not a whole bunch of, of messages floating floating by. I also see people who use haps to broadcast into Periscope, but they miss all the comments. Oh, you can take that off. All right. Yeah, well, I'll have to look into something. I just haven't bothered yet. There's, there's no rush. Um, I, I do enjoy showing interesting things to people, but you have to be able to find me. Um, it's not like I have, I have, I have, I have my loyal followings. I have seven people here. Well, eight. And I had 12 in the other one, 12 to 13. So it's not like I'm a huge broadcaster. Um, but I, I know, I know that my regulars do enjoy, do enjoy seeing uh, interesting maritime goings on. So people are running off. Uh, I could walk around and, and look in the back of this a little better. All right, let's do an experiment. No? Do I want to walk next to this boat? Yeah, I'm going to walk up to it. I don't think we're going to, I don't think it's going to tip. I might lose signal. Is that forklift starting to tip over? Look at, look at how, look at, look how tired this thing is. This, this boat is this boat is definitely past its day. Well, I was shouting at that guy. I don't think he could hear me. Boy, oh boy, I've never seen something look so terrible and still, still be floating. It's a very tired boat. Was, was that forklift starting to tilt over? So now they need the crane? No, we gotta get enough water out right of it. Well, I'll stop this video and start another one. All right, folks, I think there's going to be a little pause here. We'll go back a bit, end up with a better view. 34 foot. They can't get enough water out of it. It's too heavy. So the forklift was starting to tilt over. Let's see what they're going to do. Isn't this? Well, Roddy, do you know your boat? I don't know. I don't know power boats. But they were trying to lift it with the forklift and the back tires. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. I can feel it rocking. You can see the forklift rocking. Holy cow, it's right on the edge of, of trouble. This might be an accident. And I'm not exaggerating. I wouldn't stand near that forklift if it's already, uh, <laughs> if its back tires are rocking. 
Holy cow, don't go, don't go in there. The, the thing is though, it's out of the water. Um, but you just, I just would think that the higher up it gets, the, the less confidence it expires. Yeah, there you go. Luke, have you done this before? <laughs> uh, the, the crane is on, on the premises. It should just it should just come over and pick it up. It would take a little longer, but there wouldn't be any mishap. Um, of course, the trouble is 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 the crane only can reach so far, and they've got to put this down somewhere. Yep, there you go. Don't knock if the boat's rocking. Is the crane coming? No, no, I don't see him. I think that crane should be packed up and ready to, to move if it had to. Um, so at this point, water should be running out of whatever whatever hole there is. Uh, yeah, they did, you know, but the thing is, oh, that, that, that forklift is already tilted back. You really can't see, I'm sort of standing from, a, from the front, uh, but it was vertical and it's tilted back now. I don't know if it can tilt back, uh, you know, if they could tilt it back anymore, they, they would have by now. And, and I guess from a geometry, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you, if, if you raise this boat up higher, uh, yeah, the hole could be in the front. Um, I'm guessing it's something that probably is already a hole in the boat. Like it, the boats have, have connections for, for engine water cooling. Well, if you look, looks, looks nice. You can come down and pick it up tomorrow if you want one. Just take it away. I don't think anyone's going to complain. Uh, the the front of the, <laughs> the you should see my last scope. There's a few. Uh, there's a, like a second where the, the the crane hooked on to the the railing with its hooks and just ripped the whole f top of the boat off the off the hull. And and it went back down again. You can kind of see there's a gap where there shouldn't be a gap um, where it's been ripped up. So they're still thinking, I think it's still, they're still thinking what they're going to do. So now, now this, there's a guy that showed up that's giving some instructions. Tell him to turn, turn the back tires. Tell him to back up three inches. You know, the thing's about to hit the, uh, hit the edge of the the pier there. So I don't know what the plan is here. I'll keep scoping if you want to keep watching. Not a lot to see. Um, it would be it would actually be better if this boat was heavier because then then they'd obviously need the crane. Yes, yes to keep scoping. All right. So if the boat was heavier, they'd obviously need the crane. If the boat was lighter. There wouldn't be any issue with, with lifting it up. So they're right on the, the middle point. You want to see the disaster. Well, it's quite possible. Um, but the disaster at this point, if, if, the cra if the forklift started to tilt, then the boat would just go back in the water and, and, and stop because it would be, it'd be more or less in the water again. Um, but if they lifted this up anymore and the, and the forklift started to tilt, then, then, you have a <laughs> then, then you're going to see something. And then I'd have to scope out and call. I don't know. Would I call for help or what? Then, then you'd have, you know, these. I have to say, these people should be, you know, if they're doing something, something a little risky, they should have a life jacket on. Of course, nobody wants to wear a life jacket. Uh, this water is not not the warmest, so if you fall in, it's you're going to get numb pretty quick. There is there is help, so they come down and, and pull them out, and I might have to retreat. To the gazebo, it's starting to rain. Yeah, well, they're all they're all <laughs> cigarette smoking, leather leather skin tough guys. Yeah, it's starting to rain here, and and it's okay for the moment. But if it starts to rain any harder, I'm going to have to uh, go under shelter. Now they're all walking off. All right. So. 
not not clear what the plan is. I think the plan is to do something, <laughs> but not right away. No, no immediate lifting. Smoke break. Well, you know, yeah, that's 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 the case too. So look, look at this tired boat. I'm not. I can't see inside, but you're going to be able to. Oh boy, this thing's quite the uh, the disaster. It's either a piece of foam in there or a wasp nest. Well, with the lack of activity, I'm going to scope out. Let's see. Let's see what this truck's doing. There'll be a clue if they. Uh, the high bid is is you take away. If they haul out the, uh, <laughs> if they haul out the uh, the lifting straps, that means the crane is coming. And this truck has has that stuff in it. Why they had to back it up just that close is beyond me. Oh, they're going to take the the pump away. No more pumping. Take the hose away. You can see that's a that's a very serious pump. I suppose I should go up and, and ask if the crane is coming. No, no, the crane's not coming. Here's a guy with an extension cord. Or something. Now you'd think if there was any kind of leak, it would be leaking out instead of in at this point. <clears throat> now that it's lifted up. Alright, so they've got a small electrical pump. <clears throat> they've got the last of the water out. That, the trouble with that, that pump you just saw them take away is it's too big. Um, but for a small amount of water, I don't think that's going to change the weight very much. If they're that close to tipping over. Yep, electricity. So they have a sump pump, a little garden hose, and a big electrical cord. And it's raining, so <clears throat> I need to uh, I need to move. One this under this shelter. It was, it was the sun came up for just an instant, and then the rain came back. All right, the crane's over, and it's uh, in a parking area. It's out of the parking lot. How are the how are the what? The amenities. The amenities are, are sufficient. There's a toilet, there's a shower, there's a laundry machine. Actually, there's two laundry machines. Two dryers. Um, you can see it's very, very sheltered here, surrounded by trees. This is in fresh water, too. So I don't know if there's much more. Let's see how many people. Eight people. If you if you want to watch, I'll keep scoping. It just seems we're going to sit around for a little bit while the while the sump pump does its thing. There's going to be a bit of a delay. I I, I was hoping they'd either either lift it up right away or yeah, there's going to be a delay if they've actually turned off the forklift. Um. So I think I'm going to scope out and start another one. No, I didn't go to Florida. Uh, this is my winter place for the year. So I'm going to scope out and if something seems to be happening I'll I'll come back in but we'll have to wait a little bit and I just hate having to stand around 
<laughs> nothing, nothing to watch. So we'll see you all later. Uh, maybe there'll be a part three in a little bit. Take care, everybody. Hello, replay viewers. So the uh, we ended the last scope with the uh, the sump pump working, and the sump pump has finished its job. There was a heavy rain shower, so the sump pump had to work a little extra. High ski, and now they're just lifting it up. So it looks like it's all going to work out. I'm standing up here, not not because it's raining. The rain's quit for for now. Hi, Roddy. Uh, but I'm watching the back tire. And so far the back tire is not, <laughs> well it's still on the ground, but hello, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Maybe that was just a test. Can zoom, can try to zoom in a little bit. I'm on a new phone which has a, a better connection from, from the wireless where I'm standing. Well, I don't know what the point of going up and down was. Uh, we zoomed in a little bit. So, if you see that back tire start to lift, that's the exciting time. Not sure whether they're just going up and down. Obviously, they can take the load of this boat. The forklift can take the load of the boat. <clears throat> but. It is, it is, it is flexing, it is flexing quite a bit, too. Uh, I don't see the back tire, I think when they first tried to lift it, the back tire was coming off the, the ground. And that's when they got the, uh, the sump pump and pumped it out. Um, this, this shouldn't be too exciting. If it hasn't happened yet, it probably, probably won't. Uh, except right now they're on flat ground and they're going to have to turn around and go go out somewhere with it up into the back up into the back area so this 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 doesn't <laughs> this doesn't inspire a lot of confidence obviously this equipment is is at the limit of its uh, abilities and I was kind of hoping that the crane would come over and, and just take care of it all right here we go backing up The thing is, once they once they can get the whole boat over land, if the forklift tilts, then then there won't be an accident. Uh, the trouble is, this forklift has to to back up up a slight slope, so it's going to get more front heavy. Oh boy, I can I can see it's almost unloading the back tire as it as it flexes. It's awfully close. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Roddy. Um, but also, you can see off off toward the back there where that green boat is. That's that's all. That's uphill. So they, if they were smart, they'll get turned around right here where it's still fairly flat. It has a weight alarm. Okay. Uh, well, maybe that weight alarm's not not connected. Because uh, I didn't hear it going off earlier when the tire was coming off the ground. And I certainly don't hear it beeping with a backup beeper. Um, but see, at this point, the more boat that's on, over shore or on land, the uh, safer it's going to be. Uh, you know, if it does, it does, if it does tilt, it won't, it won't go, it will only drop a foot or so. You know, they haven't had the boat so low they can't they can't clear that that hand ladder. And now they're starting to go uphill. That's the trouble with this this spot. It's it's sloped. And for the boats they normally store, which you can see in the left of the of the screen, that's that's fine. So it looks like this might be a non-event. Of course, there's always famous last words. Once they get turned around, and I'm glad I'm standing on the roof because here comes the downpour again. Yeah, just keep it off the ground. Um, at this point, if the whole thing pitched forward, it, it, it wouldn't go very far. So, so I think this is a non-event. 
you never know. It's it's awfully close, but but if it hasn't uh, if it hasn't pitched forward already, it probably isn't going to. And you can see this boat's not the uh, not the normal size they uh, <laughs> they normally handle. This is a much bigger boat than they normally handle. Just the the whole area isn't isn't really uh, <laughs> quite the size for it. Well, if you're enjoying it, good. Uh, four viewers. Not the most exciting scope because we've certainly seen boats moved around before. This one just is a little closer to the brink of, of disaster. Yeah, well, and here it is, downpour. You know, it keeps going from the sun might be coming out to a, a downpour. I had just started warming up my soup for lunch and I thought I should check and yep, looked like there was some activity. So it looks like this is going to be a short scope with, with nothing too exciting. They're going to drive off around the end of the building and then that's the last I'll, I'll see of this. The, uh, the trouble is they have to, to set it down on something. They have a bunch of uh, New England clam chowder. No, no, today is, is soup with rice in it. The trouble is this boat has to go somewhere and they can't just pluck it pluck it down on the ground because it will tip over. There are some some temporary cleaning stands out back. And who knows what, what they're gonna use. Uh, I'm not able to I'm not gonna be able to see that part as it as it goes usually they drive pretty pretty swiftly. This is the most conservative I've seen them go. It's probably the slowest speed this thing can go at. And of course it had to become a downpour. No chowder. Yeah, I'm not a... I'm sorry. Well, well Adam, it's... it's it was... my other scopes were a little more interesting and and one from a few months ago was even better if you were interested in forklift operations. Uh, one of my scopes from from about two months ago. Had a, had, and I, I was scoping one, one boat coming out, but then another one came out, and another one came out. Uh, so this is just the... You know, I, I had to do this scope because this is the end of the sunken boat. It's going to disappear around the corner, sit around for who knows how long, and at some point will be, be carted off. They'll probably put, on a, put it on a, a low buoy and hauled away to be crushed, cut up, however they, they deal with it when they chucked under your boat. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Roddy. Uh, did, you die, did I scope a diver last uh, February? I might have. Um, watching a diver from up above isn't too interesting. You just see some bubbles and hear some scraping. So anyway, this is a short... <coughs> Sorry. I really need a drink of water. A short scope. There goes the wreck. And I was saying I needed to scope this just to have the uh, the final result in the in the record. So anyway, that's it. Time for lunch. My voice is getting getting dry. Oh, okay. When I was hauled out, <clears throat> that's right. All right, everyone. We'll catch you later. Who knows when there'll be another <laughs> another something interesting to show you. But thanks for uh, popping in for a few minutes, and uh, we'll see you all later. Bye bye.